Hello everyone, this is Pravalika from Edureka, your communicator for today's session on Selenium Java. Let's go ahead and begin with today's session. There are two keywords here, Selenium and Java. Selenium, an automation testing software, and Java, a programming language. Hold on. A programming language? Do we manual testers code, program, no, right? So shouldn't Selenium be a one-stop solution? Conveniently, yes, but it isn't. So what are his shortcomings? We're gonna look at the inadequacies in Selenium and also on how to resolve them. Of all the programming languages that exist, such as C-sharp, Python, etc., why is Java preferred? What's so unique, special, or even advantages of using Java for Selenium? Since we need a programming language, how do we integrate it with Selenium? By using the Selenium web driver. Finally, we'll test some of the features of a web application. I've chosen Amazon.in, and the few features would be, say, drop downs, shifting of tab control from one tab to another, identifying web elements, among quite a few others. So, this is the agenda for today's session. So, let's move ahead now. What is Selenium? How and when did it come into existence? Why is it even called Selenium? So, a short story out here. A techie by name Jason Huggins from ThoughtWorks Company was manually testing web applications. He found it boring and tedious. So to make his work a little easier, he decided to automate it, laying the foundations for an open source software named Selenium. At the same time, there was another automated testing software by name Mercury Interactive. And as it is widely known, Selenium is an antidote to mercury poisoning, and hence the name Selenium, a competitor to Mercury Interactive. So this is the story behind the name Selenium. Now let's go ahead and understand about the software Selenium. Testing is a repetitive and iterative process. So what does Selenium do? It automates routine tests, making work less boring. Selenium is restricted only to web application testing. That's right, only web applications, no mobile applications. It works on different browsers, such as Google Chrome, Opera, among others, can be accommodated in different operating systems, such as iOS, Windows, Linux, and can also be integrated with different programming languages, such as Perl, C Sharp, PHP, among others, including Java. But why did we choose Java particularly for Selenium? We'll answer that in a short while. So we now know that Selenium is not a one-stop solution. It has its shortcomings. Now that's okay because most of these softwares and applications have shortcomings. But the point is, can it be resolved for Selenium? If yes, then how? What could be the possible inadequacies in Selenium? Let's have a look at what the shortcomings are and how it can be resolved. So first one out here is object repository. Selenium does not have an inbuilt object repository, and that's an inadequacy. So, okay, if not technically, just what does the English phrase object repository mean? Object repository is nothing but a centralized location where objects information can be stored. Now this object repository acts as an interface between the test script and the application to identify the objects during the execution of the test case. So the test script is written in a programming language. Over here, let's take the example of Java. So the test script is written in Java and Java has certain objects in it. And the web application will be tested upon using this test script. So this inbuilt object repository helps in identifying the objects in the test script when the web application is being tested. So I hope this part is clear. So what happens if an inbuilt object repository is not there? So in a scenario like that, you would have to access multiple files, making it tedious. Now this feature, that is the feature of inbuilt object repository, can be included in Selenium by integrating it with Git. Going ahead, Selenium cannot perform image testing. So the first question that crops up in our mind is what is image testing? And if we know what it is, why is it required? So Selenium tests web applications, we know that. But the point is, what does it test? What does web application testing involve? So web application testing involves testing the functionality, usability, and consistency. So functionality testing involves image testing as well. Applications have images embedded in them, right? So we need to check if the images are performing as required or not. Selenium cannot perform this on its own, and hence needs to be integrated with a tool known as Sikulai. Unlike the other automation testing softwares, like Unified Functional Testing and Test Complete, which have official support, Selenium is an open source software, as it is built and developed by different people, and hence it has no official support. But this is compensated by community support. There is an official user group 
which you will find it in seleniumhq.org. Now coming to test reports. Selenium cannot generate test reports. So before I get into it, what are test reports? Like just maybe the English phrase test reports. Abhinav says objective analysis of the test. Perfect. So these test reports, they record the data which has been obtained from an evaluation experiment in an, in an organized manner. So it shows the comparison of the test results with the test objectives. So in simple words, what it means is, so we test a web application, so we get certain outcomes. So these outcomes are recorded in one particular column. And how should they actually be performing? So how should the web application actually perform is recorded in another column? So what the developer wants is in one column and what happens is in another column. So it's easier for us to compare. So this is exactly what test reports do. So now we've noticed that these test reports are quite essential. So Selenium cannot generate these reports, but it can generate provided it's integrated with test ng2. So do the inadequacies end here. Now let's figure out how it simplifies the work. So the first thing out here is data driven testing DDT. So what is DDT? It is a test automation framework which stores test data in a table. So it enables a single test script to execute tests for all the test data. Suppose you have different values that you want to provide or you have different data sets. So you can store all these data sets or whatever data you have in an Excel file, say in a table in an Excel file and you write a test script in Java. Now both of these can be integrated. So instead of giving different data values every single time, so all you have to do is provide the data set in a table and import that data set into your test script. So this is known as data driven testing. Now, secondly, we need to run test cases. Now in those test cases, we provide hard coded input values. So when you have these hard coded input values, you need to keep changing the values with different data sets every single time. Now, so to reduce the iterative nature of work, what can you do? We to reduce the iterative nature, we can include parameters. Now this is brought about by parameterization. So what happens in parameterization? You can provide different input values through the external parameters. So now you have only parameters in your test script. You don't have any input values. So these parameters accept different input values. So what is the utility of this? It enables us to reuse the test commands. Yes, because there's no hard coded values out there. We can share the test data and also create more flexible test process. Now data driven testing and parameterization. Both of these are dependent on programming and hence you would need an IDE. Selenium has an IDE of its own, but it is meant only for prototyping and hence we need an external IDE. So this is where programming comes into picture. Now we have established the base for the requirement of a programming language. Let's look at why Java is preferred. What is the USP of Java? If not for Selenium, generally speaking, what is the USP? What is the speciality of Java? See, when Java came into existence, when it was created, one of the major reasons came was to have a programming language that was architecture neutral, which was platform independent, did not depend on any particular platform. Apart from that, any other USP or speciality of Java? There are three primary reasons out here. The first one being IDE. Generally, IDEs provide a code editor, compiler or interpreter and a debugger that the developer accesses through a unified GUI. But Java IDEs also include language specific elements such as Ant and Maven build tools as well as test engine and JUnit testing. Secondly, Java programs are now even more performant thanks to the JIT compiler and the improved JVMs. Also, the performance of Java programs can be optimized in real time to help run it faster. Now, Java is a preferred language for developing web applications that involve serious business processes and database access on the server. So the applications that are widely tested are generally written in Java. Also, the Java promise of write once run anywhere is quite powerful. So now let's move ahead and see how do we integrate the Java programs with Selenium. So this is where the Selenium web driver comes into picture. So a product is developed for multiple platforms. Here by product, I mean the different browsers. So the choice of platform is endless and hence cross-platform testing is performed to determine the behavior of the applications in different environments. Let's take a short example out here. Say user interface of a web application appears correctly in the Chrome browser, but the layout might be disturbed in the IE browser. This is not preferred by the developer and hence cross-platform testing becomes essential. 
Initially, we had something known as Selenium RC, RC meaning remote control. Now, Selenium RC acted as a proxy server, but now this has been merged with Selenium web driver and hence the web driver directly communicates with the browser. Now let's move ahead and check how Selenium and Java is integrated. Now Selenium web driver, this acts as a programming interface to create and execute the test cases. So the test script, which is out here, which is written in Java, invokes the Selenium web driver, which is this part, which runs the test cases on different browsers. So Selenium web driver per se is written in Java and hence an understanding of the Java language is quite beneficial. So now finally, we now move on to the implementation of Selenium Java, a hands-on. So let's check out how we integrate Java with Selenium. The three items on the agenda here are, firstly, the installation of the softwares of what Java, Eclipse and Selenium. Secondly, we would run the test case. And finally, I would take you all through each test case that has been executed. So these are the three things on the agenda now. So let's begin with the installation of the softwares. So we're going to download Java first. So I'm just going to type in Oracle Java download. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on the development kit 8. I'm going to scroll down. You all can notice here that Java is available for different operating systems, Linux, Mac, Windows as well. So I have the 64-bit version. So the ones with Windows 64, go ahead and download x64.exe. And the ones with 32-bit version, i586.exe. Before downloading, accept the license agreement. So download the software and install it. It's already installed in my system. So I'm going to go ahead and check. It's going to be in my local disk C program files, Java. So when you open the Java folder, you will notice that there are two folders out here. One is JDK and the other one is GRE. Now, both of these are required. They are essential. So during your installation process, just in case one is not there, uninstall Java completely and reinstall it again. So both these folders are necessary. So if you have these, your Java installation is correct. Now we can go ahead and download Selenium, seleniumhq.org. So this is the official website. So you have the support also here. The official user group will be there. You've got previous releases. Click on that. So when you scroll down, 3.9 is the latest version. I'm going to click on it. So you need to download two files from here. One is a jar file and the other one is a zip folder. So since I've downloaded the latest one, it is 3.9.1.jar file, server standalone. The other one is a server zip file, which is 3.9.1 zip folder. So I'm going to check the download section for it. So this part, server selenium server standalone 3.9.1, the jar file, and this is a zip folder. I'm going to open that. So there are two jar files out here and a library folder. I'm going to open this. So you've got multiple jar files out here. Now, when we integrate Selenium with Java and we start coding in Java to test web applications, these jar files would be essential. And hence, you need to download all of these. We may not use everything, but we will be using most of them. So all these jar files needs to be integrated with Java. Now I'm going to go ahead and download the web driver. It's in the same website, seleniumhq.org download section. Scroll down and you will see third party drivers, bindings and plugins. And the driver is applicable available for different browsers. It is available for Mozilla, Google Chrome, Opera. Just in case you want to test your web applications in a headless browser, go ahead and click on the ghost driver. I'm going to choose the Google Chrome. Go ahead and download the latest version. So once you download, it will be there in your download section. Open the Chrome driver folder. Remember the location of this application because we would need it when we are integrating Selenium and Java. Okay, so with this part, we are done with the driver installation. Let's go ahead and download Eclipse now. See, I'm going to download the ID for Java Enterprise Edition version. E. Eclipse.org is then the official website itself. Okay. So once you scroll down, on the right hand side, you will notice more downloads. The latest version being Eclipse Photon. I have the Eclipse Kepler version installed in my system. You can you all can go ahead and download the Photon version as well. All of them will work fine. So with this, okay, we are not yet done. Let's check the Eclipse out here. In the download section, Eclipse, I'm going to open this folder. Yes, so the application is out here. I'm going to right click on the application. And for me, it says unpin from taskbar because I've already pinned the Eclipse exe file to the taskbar. So if I want to open Eclipse, I can directly go and click on it. So if you don't pin it to your taskbar, 
and then you have to open all these folders repeatedly every time you want to open eclipse that's the only reason and nothing else okay so with this we come to an end with the installation of the softwares i'm going to run the test case now for you all so i'll first run the test script which tests different features since i have multiple workspaces i need to go ahead and choose which workspace i want to do so let's go ahead and sg demo selenium java demo okay i'm going to run the test script first then i'll take you all through each test case so let's see run so the chrome browser has been launched web application has been opened which is amazon.in now the window is maximized drop down chosen books selected and fiction books has been clicked on and in the search text box i'm going to type in john grisham so i can send text also into web applications entire thing is automated and then i'm going to go ahead and choose the firm book of john grisham and then i'm going to click on it so once i click on it a new tab has been opened now i need to shift the control from the old tab to the new tab and then once the control has been shifted i'm going to add this book to the cart and then i'm just going to scroll down the web page just to show you all that scroll down can also be performed next i'm going to open a new web application a demo application to test iframes i'm going to shift the control to the inner iframe and inside the text box i'm going to type in hey and then close the browser so this is what's going to happen in today's demo so first let's start with integrating the different softwares okay so first and foremost thing you need to create a workspace you can create the workspace wherever you want i'm going to do it in my local disk c i'm going to create a folder you can name the folder whatever you want say i'm going to name it as sg1 or just say maybe sg okay sg demo is this so i'll just type sg demo okay so this is my workspace next open eclipse ide so i'm going to browse and choose as underscore demo okay and then i'm going to click on okay now it's going to load the new workspace it's going to start from the workbench so it's loading the workbench now yes so this is how your window will look like i'm maximizing it on my window on the right hand side i've got workbench figure out where your workbench lies and click on it so this is the space where you will be typing in your test script i don't need any of these outlines i'm going to close whatever i don't need outline problems java doc declaration so none of these are required so the first step out here is you create a java project new java project so i'm going to give the demo name as selenium java and make sure that your gre environment is of java and i'm going to say finish so the project has been created i'm going to click on this so i've got source and a system library now we have jar files of selenium which we need to import right so i'm going to say build path configure build path go to libraries and say add external jars first thing is your selenium server standalone i'm going to open that and the other one is your zip folder which has the library folder okay then i'm going to go ahead and click okay so if you all have noticed we've got a new subfolder which is your reference libraries i'm going to click on it so both your zip folder and your jar file has been added so i'm going to click on the zip folder so both these jar files as well as your library folder is there so all the jar files of the library folder has been imported okay so we done with this part with selenium next i need the chrome driver as well so i'm going to create a folder so new folder and the folder name i will type it as driver this is for your chrome driver folder has been created now i need the location of my chrome driver so in my case it was in the download section yes downloads chrome driver this is my application location i'm going to copy this and paste it here so control c and control v this is your chrome driver.exe file so with this we done with selenium and chrome so we've integrated it anything else no so now we need to go ahead and create a package so java package so i'm going to type in a path for it so this is a path co.edureka.selenium dot web driver dot basic okay so this is where it going to be stored and finally i'm going to create a class once i create a class i can go ahead and start typing in my test script and i'm going to say launch browser launch browser and i'm going to click on public static void main and then finish 
so the base has been set now all that is remaining is to type in the code now i have already run the test case before right so i'm just going to go ahead and open that and guide you all through it now just in case you all want to change the font of it so how do i so right click on it highlight it right click go to preferences go to general appearance color and fonts text font and i'm going to see edit it so i can either lower it or increase it so i'll say i'll give it 11 click okay and okay so it has been minimum so the font has been reduced so let's begin now so the first thing that you'll notice out here is there are multiple import packages do you need to remember these import packages don't bother i'll just comment this and see what happens so it throws up an error so i'm going to go ahead and click on the arrow it says import so it tells you what package you need to import so double click on that and it'll get imported so i'm just going to show it to you all i've double clicked on it the error has gone and the package has been imported so i'll just delete this part then okay so this is done so the same thing happens with all the other different import packages so let's begin so the first part is the web driver class i'm creating an object out of it because the driver object is very essential right so and i made it global now coming to the main function so first thing that you all see out here is system dot set property now i've repeatedly spoken about jar files right so you need to access those jar files so to access the jar files you need to access its memory location so system dot set property accesses the memory location of it so we've got web driver chrome driver this is one of the argument the other one is the location of your chrome driver so where do you get this location from we've got the driver folder click on it and we've got this right click on chrome driver exe file go to properties this is your location which so i'm going to say control c control v now let's just see what happens if i paste the location as it is so it's throwing up an error saying invalid escape sequence so does it end with this let's see if i give double let's see what happens right so the error has gone now you can either keep this long location of your choice or else you can remove this part and put a dot so this is how you shorten the location okay so i hope this part is clear so this is about set property so first we are launching the browser the chrome browser so driver new chrome driver so this launches our chrome browser so with your firefox if you have then it launches firefox or goes drive accordingly the next part is your manage timers implicit weight so in selenium there are three types of weights you've got implicit weight explicit weight which is a conditional weight and fluent weight in this session i'm only going to talk about implicit weight so what does implicit weight do so when you open a web application different web elements load at different intervals of time few of them load immediately few of them take a certain longer duration to load so the element web element that you want to identify or locate takes a little longer to get loaded and when you're running your test case you do not have implicit weight then it tries to identify the web element immediately and if it does not find it immediately it'll throw up an error saying no such element found so implicit weight ensures that your entire test script waits for a certain duration that is the maximum duration is going to wait for 15 seconds till it identifies a web element so just in case your web element loads within a period of 3 or 4 seconds it's not going to wait for 15 seconds it's going to proceed with that but if your web element is going to take longer than 15 seconds to load then again it's going to throw up an error saying no such element found you can change your time period which is 15 and seconds you can change this part so with this we've launched our browser we are waiting for certain period the entire script is going to wait for a certain amount of time for different web elements at different points of time next i'm going to open my web application so i'm using driver.navigate to amazon okay so this is about driver.navigate to so this opens the web application of our choice so this is your web application name navigate to it navigates to it next once the application is open i'm maximizing the window all these are methods which are inbuilt i'm accessing all these methods next once the web application is opened i'm going to get the title of the web application using get title method so i know the name of the application but this is only for validation that i'm doing so get title method accesses the title of your web application and it is stored in the variable title so i've got two strings out here one is this title and the other one is amazon.in so using the if else statement i'm comparing two strings two strings of what amazon.in is one string and the other string has the title of the web application which we got using get title now irrespective of the case that means capital and small letters 
irrespective of the case equals ignore case ignores the case of the e letters ignores the case of the string it's comparing two strings so once it compares it if both the strings are equal if both of them are the same then the output will be title matches in case there's a variation in the strings between title and amazon.in it will print out the exact title you can also say system.out.println and title mismatch i'm just printing out the exact title to see why there's a mismatch so i've already run this so i'm going to check the output part it says online shopping site so i've got this so this is the title it's a long one i just typed in amazon.in but the actual title is a bigger string and that's the reason it has printed the string instead of title matches this is only for validation that we've done so this thing is about web application and get title method as well as launching a browser now locating web elements right so once i'm going to open amazon web applications generally have a number of web elements and each web element can be uniquely identified let's see how i'm going to right click and go to inspect so it's inspecting the web application page i'm going to go to selector so you've got multiple web elements out here i want to identify one particular web element say i want to identify category i'm going to go ahead and click on category so it has highlighted this part span class so this is the unique identification of the web element category there are multiple ways of identifying the web element i'm going to right click on this i'm going to go to copy so one says selector copy select and copy xpath so using the selector or using the xpath i can identify the web element these are two ways apart from that i can identify the web element using the name that is over here the text of the web element say category or else i can identify using the let's just click on category again so here i've got class so i can identify the web element using the class name as well i can identify web elements using its id as well so there are multiple ways i'll show you one by one so this is how you identify the web elements so going back to the desk script let's look at the web elements now so i've shown you all category right so i'm using css selector which is copy selector i've just copied the selector and pasted it out here i'm identifying the web element category now in the same statement i'm saying get text so it has identified so this is again for validation to see if the web element has been identified of our choice so i'm identifying the web element then i'm getting the text which is there in the location of that web element so get text method gets the text which is there in the location of the web element that we've identified so the text is being received and it is being stored in tag name of data type string sorry so it is stored in tag name and i'm printing out tag name system.out.println tag name so i've printed it out so i've already run the test script right so that's the reason it's here and that is category no error absolutely so what are we going to test so i'm going to show you all the next three steps that we're going to do so we are done with launching the browser step one step two opening the web application step three maximizing the window step four we've identified a web element now as you all can see there's a downward arrow out here so the moment i go towards the downward arrow there's a drop down i'm not clicking on the downward arrow i'm only moving towards the downward arrow and highlighting it and i've got this drop down then i'm going to go ahead and choose books identify fiction books and i'm going to click on fiction books so these three are the next few steps so let's see how that's done so it says web element category driver find element css select using css selector i'm identifying the web element which is the drop down so element identified then actions is a class and action is the object that i'm creating instantiating it so it says action dot move to element category so i've identified the web element now i know the location of the web element so i'm going to move towards that and then i'm going to perform whatever it's supposed to do so just by hovering around the downward arrow there's a drop down so i'm going towards the web element and saying perform that's what action does and then we move ahead okay throws interrupted exception right so you all can see there's a thread dot sleep out here now this does nothing all it does i won't say nothing but its function is to create a time lag see i'm going towards the downward arrow and performing a particular action if i don't have thread dot sleep what happens everything happens in quick succession and you may not even notice that it's happening so it happens very quickly so if i give thread dot sleep there's a pause so it's going to the downward arrow it's going to wait after the drop down for a certain period of time then it's going to choose books again wait for a certain period of time it's not necessary since i'm showing you all each test case individually that's the reason i've given thread dot sleep 
that's the only function of this. So to have thread dot sleep, you need throws interrupted exception. So now you do not know that you need throws interrupted exception. And even if you know, you do not know where to type it out. So it's throwing up an error, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And it says add throws declaration. And it also tells you where you need to add it in the main, right? Public static void main. Okay, just say, how do you add it directly? I'm just gonna say add throws declaration, double click on it. So it has added it. Okay, I'm just going to remove this part. It's not required now since we already have it. So coming down. So we perform the downward arrow. Next, I'm going to go ahead and choose books. So I'm going to identify the location of the web element books using CSS selector. I'm going to move action dot move to element. So now the action is towards the web element books and it's going to say click and perform and then there's a wait. Now, so books has been chosen now. Now I'm going to identify fiction books and click on it. So I'm identifying fiction books using link text. So what does link text do? You need to know the exact text of the web element. So now the exact text is fiction books. Suppose you type in fiction book without the S, then it will throw up an error saying no such element found. Or just in case there's another web element with fiction book as the text, it will identify that element. So each web element is uniquely identified. So using link text, you can type in for the exact text. If you know the exact text, only then use link text. So that's your fiction books. It has been identified and it says click. So now fiction books is click. We are done with these three functions. Now let's see what happens next. In the same tab, a new web page has been loaded. And here in this text box, I'm going to type in John Grisham. Right? So there are three things which are being done. One, I need to identify the text box. Two, I'm going to type in John Grisham. And in three, I'm going to click on the search button. So again, three functions, three actions. So first thing, I'm going to identify the text box. So I'm identifying the text box using IDs. I'll just show you how ID is used. I'm identifying this web element. I'll just identify it again. This part. Okay. Okay. Selector. Select. Okay. So it has chosen. So this is your unique identification of the web element. Now there's something known as ID. So the ID is two tab search text box. So you can identify the web element using the ID. So I'm going to go back. So I'm identifying the web element using ID. So this is the part of the text box. Next, using the my element object, I'm going to type in John Grisham. So anytime you want to type text into any text box, you need to use send keys. So send keys is what performs sending the text option. So John Grisham is a text which I'm sending into the text box. That's what send keys does. Next, I'm going to click on the search button, right? So I've identified using the class name. So I'm going to again go ahead and choose this. So here I've got class, right? So the class name is name hyphen input. So I'm identifying the search button using its class name. So ID two tab search text box send keys is done. Next we're identifying the search button and then clicking on it. Now what happens once we click on it? So clicked. So this part is done. So here I'm just going to perform one action, which is identify the book form and then click on the book form. I'm going to show you the next action as well. I'm identifying the book form and clicking on the form book. A new tab has been opened now. I need to shift the control to the new tab to access the web elements of this new tab. So I want to add this book to the cart. So I need to shift the control from the old tab to the new tab and then click on add to cart. So we are doing three actions now. We're going to choose the book, the form, shift the control to the new tab and choose add to cart. Okay, so let's get back to this. So we've searched next. I'm going to say driver.find element partial link text. Now, initially we had spoken about link text and link text. We needed the exact text of the web element here. Just in case you do not know the exact text, then it says you can use partial link text. Partially, you know, the text of the web element. So you're using partial link text and identifying the book form. The actual name is what the form, but I've just given form. Now let's just say when you're using partial link text and you're given a particular text, but there are multiple elements, web elements, which partially match to the text that you have. Then it'll identify all those elements. So, and when you use click, it'll click whichever of its choice, the first one generally. So that's what partial link text. That's why we generally do not prefer partial link text or link text. It's always better to identify web elements using the CSS selector, the X path, ID or class name as well. But link text and partial link text are not frequently used. Okay, so we've identified the firm book and then clicked on it. Now we've got a new tab. We need to shift the control to the new tab. 
we've got handles out here. So this handles java.util.set, I am creating a sort of an array. So just in case I've got multiple tabs open, then I'm going to store all the tabs in this handles function. So that's what it says. Driver dot get window handles. You can notice the S out here. Plural form. So multiple window handles are identified and stored collectively in this handles. Now we're going to perform an iterative function if there are more than two tabs. So if you go to the second one, then third one, then fourth one, till you choose which tab you want. So string win handle driver dot get window handle. So what does this do? Get window handle get the handle of the present tab you're working on and not the new tabs but whichever tab you're presently working on is what it identifies and it stores in win handle one now i do not need the present tab i need to shift the control to the new tabs so whatever the present tab is i'm going to remove it from the handles set so that's removed so my present win handle is removed so now i can shift to whichever tab i want okay now string win handle handles dot iterator dot next so it's an iterative function. So it's going to go to the second tab, then the third tab, and fourth if there are more. So this is the iterative nature of it. Now I'm taking in another string, win handle two. Now win handle two generally stores the tab to which we want to shift the control to. So we need another string where we can identify which tab we want to shift control to and then switch the control. So that's why you have another variable out here. I'm using the if statement. So if win handle is not equal to win handle one. Win handle performs the iterative nature. And win handle one has the handle of the current tab from which you want to shift the control to. So only if you have two different tabs here, two different win handles, that's when it's going to enter the if statement. And here you've got win handle two. So in win handle two, I'm going to store in win handle. So whichever the current next tab that is there, that is stored in win handle two. Now after this, I'm going to switch the control to the new tab. Driver dot switch to window win handle two okay so now i've identified the handle of the second window the second tab and then i'm switching the control to the identified one of our choice and then i'm going to print out the handle so here i printed it out right cd window this is the tab to which i need to shift the control to and then there's thread dot sleep again identify the web element i've done it using css selector add to cart so we've identified and as i've also mentioned towards the end i've just scrolled down just to scroll down function. Now there are types of scroll down in the sense you can scroll down to the end of the page or you can scroll down to a particular location or you can scroll down till a particular web element is visible. So different ways. But right now I'm only showing you how to scroll down towards the end of the page. So JavaScript executor JS and driver JS dot execute script. So these are your arguments and I've got zero and scroll height. So these are the arguments that are there. And then it says thread dot sleep again a pause. So I've identified the scroll and then I'm scrolling it down towards the end of the page. So with this, we've tested the various features on the web application Amazon.in. Now I'm going to test something known as iframes. Now Amazon.in does not have iframes. Iframes is what when there's more than one HTML document in the same web page. So we need to shift the control from one HTML to another HTML. That is not there on Amazon.in, so I'm just running it on a demo testing website. So I'm going to identify the frame. How am I identifying the frame using the X path? So once I identify the frame to which I want to shift control to using the X path, I'm going to switch to. Similar to the tab switch, I'm going to shift also to the frame. Switch to frame. So identify it and then switch it. So this part is done. Now I've shifted to the frame of our choice. And then inside the frame to which I've shifted the control to, there's a text box. And in that text box, I'm going to type in hey, only to show you that the control has been shifted from one frame to another frame. Then it's going to identify the web element using the X path. First, you identify the frame, shift the control. Then you identify the text box, which is there in the new frame. Again, I'm using X path to identify it. And then send keys hey. So I've already mentioned that send keys is for sending text into the web elements into a text box if it's there. And then I've got driver.close and driver.quit. So with this, we close the browser. So this is the test case that we've run. So I'll run it once again before I open for doubts. I'm going to run this again. So the Chrome browser has been launched, which is new Chrome driver. Application using navigate method, I've opened the application. Then I've maximized the window. 
gone to the downward arrow, chosen drop down, chosen books, and then I'm going to identify fiction books using link text and click on it. Identify the search text box and type in John Grisham in it by using the send keys. So John Grisham, yes, using send keys, John Grisham is typed in. I've clicked on the search button. Then I'm going to identify the firm book. Identify the firm book and then click on the firm book. So it's going to click on the firm book and then that's going to open a new tab. I'm going to switch the control to this new tab. Then I'm going to identify add to cart. Once this has been added to the cart, I'm going to scroll down just towards the end of the page. Then I'm going to launch a new web application, which is the demo application to show you iframes. This is one HTML document. This is another. So I'm going to shift the control to this frame. And in this frame, I'm going to identify this text box and then type in hey in this text box. So as you'll have noticed, the application has not been launched completely. So Selenium will start executing the test case only once the application has been completely loaded. Till then, Selenium will not start. The testing will not happen if your web application is not loaded completely. Now it's been loaded, has been identified, text box, hey, typed it. I'm going to close the browser. Now I'm going to be open for doubts. Any queries with respect to iframes or scroll down, identifying the web elements. So I hope you all have enjoyed it. Stay productive and thank you very much for joining.